Alright, so now let's look at the appendices. Um, not a lot to do here really, so we're going to fly through this just to finish off this series now. First appendix is the normative appendix for the British standards. I've gone through through most of them and there's nothing new, it's just that they're now having their versions updated. So if any of your work covers these particular BS standards to a little detail, then there may be an amendment in the newer versions that you need to refer to. But all of these that you see here have been updated to 2015 or 2016, so they've been referred to in the book. A couple more. A couple more. A few more. And. That one's interesting, plugs and sockets. Okay, and there we go. Medical equipment, cathode protection, and we get to the end. Okay, so all those British standards have the newer versions referenced. Okay, Appendix 2, minor change. It's mentioning in part in number 3 about the, um, the recognition of the Northern Ireland ESQCR. It's just a um, similar to our ESQCR, it's just obviously version for Northern Ireland with a slight difference, it's similar to the literacy work regulations there. And um, 7 for theatres, they've split it into two sections, the so 7 has been split and they've added that there's guidance on the recommendations for the places of entertainment available in the technical standard for places of entertainment issued by the Association of British Theatre Technicians. So it's recognising um, other standards for technical uh, reference for theatres. Appendix 3 They've um, taken the contents of the old Appendix 14, the calculation of the maximum measured earth fault loop, and they've put that into Appendix 3. There is still an Appendix 14, but they've just taken away the earth fault loop part. Uh, appendix 4 and 5, surprisingly, there is um, there's no change at all. So uh, I was expecting a lot of changes, but there's li minor, minor, minor things. There's nothing significant at all. Appendix 6, a couple of changes here. So we have a change to the minor work set. What they've done is they've restructured it and added another section. So, um, actually, before we cover the minor works, there's this little addition to the electrical installation certificate, which is regarding the, um, the part 8, the energy efficiency. It's not actually new. What they've done is they've taken away. Um, a part of it and they've put this in its place so under the departures you've got details of energy efficiency measures from parts 8 to 1 details of the measures taken on the certificate the risk assessment attached box is still there so it's as if they just changed the title of the box it's not a new box for the minor work cert though they have done a few things they've rearranged parts 1 and 2 they've relayed them out you now have to record the earthfall loop impedance ZDB supplying the board that the circuit is added to. So instead of just a circuit ZS, we also have to have a ZS at DB. We also have to confirm the continuity of the main protective bonding for all of the services. We also have to, with circuit conductors uh, details, we have to actually have a record of the conductor size now. So we have a conductor size field. And the old continuity check was a tick. We do a ZS and tick continuity. We now have to record the value of continuity. So the R1, R2, or the R2, there's a, a there's a want for a numerical value now. And they've also added with it the ring final. So the little R1, the little R, and the little R2, that's been added in there as well. A bit of information on the consumer's distribution board for the schedule of inspections. So we have components are suitable according to the assembly's manufacturer's instructions. So we've been referring to assembly manufacturing instructions with regards to short circuit protection and making sure that things are suitable for that coordination. There's also a regulation in there about having everything in the, in the assembly or in the panel of the same manufacturer. So that's something else that we have to verify on our schedule of inspections. For the condition report, uh, note for person producing the report, so the person producing it, that's the inspector, any deficiencies with the intake equipment should be reported to the person ordering the work.
So beforehand, it was just it was just um, under the guidance for the recipient that anything found in issue should be reported. Now the person issuing it is supposed to obviously give guidance to the recipient, which kind of makes sense. What else? Uh, Schedule of test results. We've got the need to record the milliamp rating of an RCD. That's fine. We've had that many years now with NIC type certificates. The maximum permitted to ZS, again, we've had that before, but that's now here on the IET's uh, standard. Also now with the installation resistance test though, they now, they now want the actual voltage that we've tested with. So 500 volts DC or 250 DC or whatever. So that's that's a slight change to the scheduler test results. Uh, Appendix 7, tiny change, they've added to table 7B that it includes BS7211 flat type cable. Great. Appendix 8 um, has had an, another section for um, the rating factors for the current carrying capacity with regards to bus bar trunking systems. They're adding rating factors now. Um, if you worry about that, then there's a bit more reading to do there. With regards to Appendix 14, again, they've taken out the calculation of the the, um, the ZS measured must be less than or equal to 0.8 times U over I. Uh, U over, over ZS, which is the calculated value of earthful loop impedance, but they still have kept in Appendix 14 determination of prospective fault current. They've added a bit of content to it. They're mentioning that the um, with three phase, the prospective fault current should be highest between line conductors, so two phases. An approximation of the prospective fault current between line conductors can be determined by measurement of the line conductor and neutral, so one phase to neutral, multiplied by the square root of three, which is 1.732. That's how you can calculate the prospective fault current between two phases. Approximation of the simultaneous short circuit fault is still multiplied by a factor of two, which is what is the common way of doing three phase prospective fault current anyway. So they've added that. Um, the rest of the appendices, there's nothing there. 15 is the same with the illustrations of the ring and radials, 16 is the same with the SPDs, so there's nothing else. But we you need to know is that again this this is this is a draft. There are many errors in there. Uh, for example, here's one uh, with uh, the figures. Um, they've actually kept in the edit something wrong, something wrong here. So um, with the DC arrangements, there's lots to change in the regulations. Um, but it's still out for public draft, uh, for public comment till sometime in August, August 20 something, 27th or so. Um, so. Of these videos, if if you're watching these in the window, you know the draft is still out for comment. Get involved, actually. You know, go onto the BSR website. You can see it, and you can comment on any single regulation that you feel needs to be evaluated further. Doesn't need to be there. Is confusing. Is in conflict to another regulation. I've added. Um, I'm on. I'm on 43. I've put 43 comments in. Probably none of them will be listened to. Who knows? But you know, um, I've gone through it. I'm gonna do a little summary video later on, just to kind of highlight it closer to release, or close to the end of the draft, anyway, at least, to see um, you know what significant changes are going to be in there. But I put some comments in. I've given some feedback. I've done these videos just in case you've not had time to actually download it and read it, and you wanted to see it through this other medium. But um, if you're watching this and the window is still open download it, read it, give some feedback in, they may listen to you. You may come up with the the brilliant answer that means we'll never have to do this again for a few more years. Who knows? Mm. Anyway, I'm going to get on with making some other videos, some uh, questionable videos about competent person schemes and stuff like that if you've not checked them out already. Uh, see you later. Bye.